So we just got the official MRI results back on Yankees pitcher Luis Severino, and it turns out that his injury is a little bit more complex than we all originally thought. What's up everybody, welcome back. For those new, my name is Brian, and I'm a doctor and a sports fan, and it's my goal here to combine those two interests, to look at different sports injuries and sports medicine topics, to try to teach you all a little bit more about what's going on. I've been looking forward to bringing some more baseball content to you all, and what better opportunity to talk about a different injury we haven't discussed before than Yankees pitcher Luis Severino, and and the latissimus dorsi strain that he was just diagnosed with on his MRI. Initially, the Yankees thought that he had a rotator cuff injury, and we'll explain later on in the video why these two can often be confused and why this lat strain can be really, really hard for doctors to pick up on just basic physical exam. We're gonna talk about the anatomy, the function of the latissimus dorsi, and why it's so necessary for pitchers in particular during their throwing motions. And then we'll talk about some previous research that looks into how this is treated and what previous professional pitchers have had happen in terms of recovery and return to their sport. As always, hit that subscribe button if you like these videos and wanna see more content and stay up to date and let's get started. So straight to our anatomy right off the bat here, Everybody thought initially this was a rotator cuff injury. Pulling up our shoulder anatomy here to first touch on those four key muscles in the rotator cuff, we think of them as the sits muscles. We have the supraspinatus, the subscapularis, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. And those are the four main muscles that provide a lot of structural support to our shoulder joint, or the glenohumeral joint as it's called. Those muscles are often injured in pitchers, particularly on their throwing shoulder because of all the stress on that shoulder. But what we don't see in this picture is all the other muscles that attach up in this same area. And one of those, of course, is the latissimus dorsi. We've all seen big bodybuilders with these big, broad, triangular backs, and that big fan, broad-shaped muscle on the back is your lat. It originates near your spine and then goes up and inserts into an actually pretty small little band actually on your arm bone up near the shoulder. So right off the bat, we can see based on where this muscle inserts, it's right next to the rest of these rotator cuff muscles, and that's part of what makes this so hard to diagnose. Our lats has a lot of different functions, but the big ones that we need to think about and that you'll be familiar with are what we would call humeral adduction. Whenever you're in the gym and you see somebody doing a lat pull down, that action of bringing the arms closer into the body is called humeral adduction, we're adding back in close to the body. But for pitchers, the lats also are involved in internal rotation of the humerus. If we switch to a side view here, and this is my arm, external rotation is bending it outwards, and internal rotation is bending it down. Now, some of the muscles in the rotator cuff are involved in internally rotating the shoulder, but the lat is one of the ones we often forget about. Why is this important for a pitcher? As you've probably seen, there's different phases of the pitching motion and different muscles are involved at different points. The key two phases we're gonna talk about here are the cocking phase and the acceleration phase. So the cocking phase of a pitching motion is whenever the arm has come back and is cocked and loaded into that position ready to throw. Whenever a pitcher is going through their windup really quickly, that arm comes back pretty quickly and so in order to prevent it from rotating externally too much, those internal rotators have to fire to slow that motion down so that you don't overstress the shoulder. So your lat is involved in that cocking phase, getting your arm back loaded and ready to throw. And then of course, all of the throwing motion comes from that hard and fast internal rotation of the shoulder. So while there's other muscles helping here, the lat is helping with that internal rotation whenever a pitcher throws. You wouldn't think of your big back muscle causing rotation at your shoulder, but this is part of what the latissimus does. There's another muscle in kind of a similar spot here on the shoulder called the teres major. And it's also, and it has similar functions and oftentimes goes hand in hand with a latissimus injury just based on the close proximity so for the sake of research, they're often discussed within the same context. So any of those stages of his pitching where you're relying on that latissimus to fire, you're gonna have increased pain. And with increased pain comes impaired function. Let's next discuss specifically what it means that it's grade two. So strains like this are graded one through three. One is most mild and three is most severe. To help us out with this, we're gonna use a Kleenex. This is an analogy we use a lot of times in the doctor's office. So normal muscle right here. A grade one injury is when there's basically tiny, tiny little microscopic tears that are very, very small in a small portion of that muscle that you really can't even see unless you got super close, but there's pain associated with it. Now a grade two tear, which is what he has, is when there's actually more visible and significant tearing inside that component of the muscle. 
So you can kind of see how this looks a little bit more like some Swiss cheese. And so this would signify grade two tearing of that latissimus. Now, of course, grade three is the most severe and a grade three is basically when there's been kind of complete tearing of that muscle and of course with pain and impaired function. Finally, what does previous research show us about how athletes recover from these types of injuries. The biggest thing is you've gotta sit someone out until their symptoms are gone. They're estimating six weeks, but a big portion of that time is going to be just simply resting his shoulder until his pain goes away. During that time, they'll take advantage of improving his core strength to take some of that load off his shoulder during pitching, but no throwing until that pain and the symptoms are gone. Once you do that, you have to go through reestablishing the normal range of motion you had in your shoulder before the injury, and then you can work on your long toss and getting back to throwing. We've got really nice recent data. A 2019 study that just came out in the American Journal of Sports Medicine looked between 2011 and 2016 at all professional baseball pitchers who had either a latissimus dorsi injury or a Terry's minor injury. They had 120 pitchers over this time period who had these injuries, and overall the return to play rate was 75%. So three out of every four of the players who had this injury were able to return to pitching. 90% of these athletes followed were treated conservatively, meaning without surgery, and there was really no difference in return to play based on surgery or no surgery. Usually if the tear is complete, then they'll go to surgery, and if it's not a complete tear but the rehab isn't effective, then they'll consider surgery. The interesting thing they found though is the players who were treated conservatively had more pitching deficits or impaired throwing and statistics when they returned compared to the group that had surgical management had no difference in terms of their overall stats and throwing percentages. So we'll see what happens with Severino here. It sounds like initially they're gonna go conservative, they're gonna shut him down, see if things heal up, because obviously you want to avoid a surgery. But if his rehab doesn't go as well as they would expect and he's continuing to have persistent pain, then they'll take a look at whether or not surgery is a good option for him. So whenever you see pitchers with shoulder injuries, don't just think about the rotator cuff. There's a lot of other muscles up there that are involved in throwing mechanics. So you've gotta remember things like the lat. That's it for the video, everybody. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you all learned something about the shoulder anatomy and throwing mechanics and a kind of unique type of injury that we don't see too often. Let me know any comments you have below, questions about this or other videos you wanna see. And until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.